I know, Carol. Dr. Graham told me everything. So Lister is really into sappy romances. Who knew? Seriously, he is really engaged in that. Off! <sighs> I went to the officer's block. When? So Lister has gone into a room that hasn't been decontaminated yet. You haven't done it yet! Tomorrow. It's on tomorrow's daily goal list. Item 34, right after learn Portuguese. Here we get our first mention of Yvonne Magruder. Rimmer's first, and only. What about Yvonne Magruder? That was a date. She'd been hit on the head by a wind. She had concussion. <laughs> it's got some unfortunate implications, but I think the story changes over time anyway. She still went to bed with me. Yeah, because she had wonky vision and she thought you were somebody else. <laughs> Serves her up for being concussed, doesn't it? Lister wakes up to find that he has a very high fever. I'm going down to the medical unit. Lights? Ah, uh, Miss Magruder, where were we? I'll talk about it more in another video where I talk about the cat separately, but this scene right here is my first experience with Red Dwarf, and part of what led me to watching it the first time. Except that bit. I don't want that bit. But all the rest of this is mine. Seriously though, if you know someone who is a cat lover and you want to get them into Red Dwarf, show them this scene. Ow, yeah! It took me a while to catch on to it, but Lister totally corpses in this scene. Time for a snack. So Rimmer needs to help Lister up, but he can't do anything because, well, he's a hologram. And Cat is too busy being Cat to help, so they have to rely on the scudders. I'm the ice! <laughs> Lister has what would have been pneumonia, except that the virus has mutated over millions of years, so they don't know what it is or what it's going to do. It turns out that Lister had gone into Kachansky's room to think about what could have been. She could have said, no, you're a filthy, stinking, loathsome, disgusting object. I wouldn't be seen dead within a plague pit. She said, yes, stranger things have happened. Only two spring to mind, Lister. The spontaneous combustion of the mayor of Warsaw in 1546, and that incident in 12th century Burgundy when it rained herring. So now Lister is thinking about three things. Conflicting emotions about how things would have gone with Kachansky had he asked her out. Spontaneous combustion and raining fish. That's gonna be important in a few minutes. Now release the mechanism. Incoming slapstick in three, two... I think Rimmer enjoyed that a bit. Possibly a gnat's more gently than that? Raining fish, check. Spontaneous combustion of the mayor of Warsaw, check. It really is gonna be one of those days. <laughs> you started to hallucinate. Only your hallucinations were solid. Solid? Solid. You mean they were solid? Okay, I'll put it another way. You had hallucinations, all right? Yeah. And they were solid. Thanks for that explanation, Rimmer. And then you hallucinated two men in the drive room. Apparently, one of them's your confidence, and the other's your paranoia. Title drop. You're my confidence. I just love that accent. It makes me go all wibbly. Ditto. I love Lister's accent. And Lister's confidence and paranoia. Check. Isn't that a urine stain on the front of your trousers? So Lister's confidence is similar to an American game show host with really white teeth, and his paranoia is this creepy little guy. Say hello then, won't you? Only trying to be friendly. I think we should arrest them. What for? For being hallucinations. Rimmer has all the answers. Now I know what the peach stands for. Idiot, am I right? You are treading a very thin line, Milado. Also, I think Milado is my favorite common Rimmerism. Why do you never listen to Mr. Rimmer? He's so much more experienced, more <laughs> level-headed, so much better than you. I think it's really interesting that Lister's paranoia sides with Rimmer. Says some interesting things about Lister and how maybe deep down, maybe some small part of him thinks that Rimmer is better than he is. Or at least he takes Rimmer's criticisms to heart more than he lets on. A bit later, Confidence convinces Lister to find where Rimmer hid the personality disc so he could bring Kachansky back as a hologram. I'm still really surprised that the show doesn't touch on how pointless that would be. I know Lister is dumb as a brick in these earlier episodes, but I can't believe that Rimmer wouldn't bring up the fact that romancing a hologram would just be an exercise in futility. Meanwhile, Rimmer is with paranoia. No! Stop him! Stop him! Stop him! Quick! Stop him! Ah, uh, you haven't met Stab him. <laughs> Real smooth there, Rimmer. Stab him, meet Lister's paranoia. Lister's paranoia, this is Stab him. I love how the scudder quickly drops the syringe. You almost have to look for it to notice it sometimes, but those little robots have so much personality. We think we can get Kachansky back without turning you off. All we're gonna do is turn off all unnecessary power systems and the Holly says it'll work. Ding dong, another great idea from the people who bought you beer milkshakes. I love the light bulb. Like, how far ahead did he plan that little gag? Lister, you're not having her disc or any disc. Come on, King, you know Rimmer. Where would he hide him? 
So Lester figures out where Rimmer hid the discs. And they have to be right under my nose so he can laugh at me. Wrong and getting wronger all the time. The solar panel outside our sleeping quarters. You followed me, you goit. And a bit later, Rimmer finds the medical unit destroyed and paranoia missing. You will not... You will not... You will not be better until they've gone. They know that. That's kind of a red flag, but Lister chooses to ignore it. We waiting for a king. Nothing. So Lister and his confidence go outside the ship. Did you hear something? Nope. In space, no one can hear you. Cha-cha-cha. Because there weren't enough references to Alien already on this show. And it turns out that confidence killed paranoia. I killed him. Cha-cha-cha. What you mean you killed him? Cha-cha-cha. And pretty brutally. I just fed him into the waste grinder and flushed his mints into space. Gets a little bit hot. I get a bit claustrophobic in these suits. And finally, Lister notices that red flag. Take your helmet off. I'll die. I'll prove it to you. I'll take mine off first. And it turns out that too much confidence can be a bad thing. So much for confidence. So Lister has the disc, and Rimmer gives him fair warning. I want it on record. That disc is a one-way ticket to Miseryville. Oh, you have no idea, Rimmer. Well, at least he dressed up for the occasion. Seriously, look at that tie. Do you honestly think I'd put Kachansky's disc in Kachansky's box where any munchkin could find it? This is like that rare episode of Tom and Jerry where Tom wins at the end. I love it. Welcome aboard, Rimsy. So ends confidence and paranoia. This is another filler episode, up until the end, but it's a lot of fun. It says interesting things about Lister, that his image of confidence is an American game show host with a tan and blindingly white teeth. And his image of paranoia is like, ultra rimmer. Fun fact, the actor who played Confidence was Scottish. Very Scottish. When I say nobody calls me faggot, Craig calls me faggot. <laughs> he just did a really convincing American accent. And the guy who played Paranoia was originally, appropriately, a runner-up to play Rimmer. There isn't much else to say about this one. The idea of one's clashing personality traits coming to life as characters is interesting, but it's really more funny than thought-provoking. This is a rare early Red Dwarf episode where the end leads into the next episode, so next time we get double the rimmer. Next up is Me Squared, which is also the final episode of season one. See you then. Put a trace on paranoia. What's a trace? It's space jargon. It means find him. No, it doesn't. You just made it up to be cool.